then on a uh, kind of transitional Tuesday. A little bit of a different week, Thanksgiving week here on Birds 365. You got your Mega Mac guys, Jody McDonald and John McMullen back. We thank Barrett Brooks for filling the void yesterday. And when you put Barrett in, that's a big guy you got filling the void. Uh, but it is never easy when we're without uh, John McMullen, who tells me he's a little worse for the wear for going to Indy there, bud. Yeah, man. You don't want to go on those uh, little tubes. Uh, a lot of germs there. So knocked out a little bit with the with the cold, but I'll get through it, Johnny. Yeah, Hopefully yeah. with your help. You're a tough guy sucking it up. We appreciate it greatly. Good to get you back in. Uh, and yes, you were out in Indianapolis for the come from behind Eagles victory, which I wasn't sure they were getting until uh, Jalen Hurts did skip to my Lou into the end zone. But a win is a win is a win. At the end of the day, you got to have your nose down at the wire. And the Eagles did just that, getting it in the 60th minute. So it was a good win for me. But it was a tough to analyze win. And we missed you yesterday. Um, there were big stretches that game where you wondered what the hell the Eagles were doing and thought they were going to lose. They didn't. And that's the bottom line. But um, afterwards, a uh, guy like you've been covering teams forever, specifically the Eagles. What kind of grade do you give the Eagles for a game like that? Yeah, it's a good question. I get what you're saying. I mean, I, I don't think they played well offensively at all. Um and I think they really uh, missed Dallas Goddard, which is understandable. And I think that's going to be an issue moving forward uh, until he gets back. Because you can talk about this village approach, Jody, but <clears throat> you can take a whole village. They're not giving you – they're not approximating what Dallas Goddard gives you. So um, that's number one. Uh, I think they really struggled with that. I think Nick pressed a little bit. You know, he really wanted this win. I talked about it. I kind of played it down. But you saw the emotion afterward. He he really wanted this win. And you saw he broke down a little bit, walked into the locker room. Um, and I thought he pressed a little bit. A little strange decisions, you know, given Boston Scott. You know, they've done that before. They don't. They did that in Detroit in week one. He doesn't play, doesn't play, doesn't play, and then they ask him to go close the game. That, to me, is just weird. That's the weird use of a player. Um, and it didn't work. Um, so, I mean, all the accolades, all the – you can't give Jalen Hurts enough credit. He put that team on his, on his back. I mean, it was all him running the football pretty much in the fourth quarter. Um, and you got to give the offensive ball. I mean, that was like the Red Sea parting. Uh, that touchdown, I couldn't believe it from the from the press box. You you would not believe how much room there was. Mm -hmm. I don't know what Indianapolis was trying to accomplish there, but uh, it was pretty impressive. Defensively, I mean, they had the first drive and that was it. Now, they they locked them down and when <laughs> Walt Joseph, man, you know, it was interesting. I thought, you know, first watch, I thought, man, he played well and he seemed to be all over the place. Um, and, you know, I was interested to see the pro football focus grades if, if they backed up. And sure enough, they graded him the best Eagles defender. Now, I thought it was T.J. Edwards on first view. I think T.J. played really well. Yeah. But anytime you give up that number, we talk about it a lot, 17 or less. Anytime you give up 17 in the modern NFL, that's the goal. And the Eagles have done that again and again and again and again. Detroit and, 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 and Washington were the two outliers. This is a good defense. And they got better with uh, Linwell, Joseph, and Adamic and Sue. And I kind of mentioned last week on the show, if this works, and it worked for one week, it worked like gangbusters, if this works long term, this is going to create a whole new way of doing business in the NFL. I, I really believe that with veteran players. Yeah, um, and Joseph played well and Sue played well. Um, they did both get paid. The details came out on their contract. It was more than the veteran minimum. Yeah. So the Eagles had to pony up to get both of these guys in. They've got incentive clauses in their contract where they can actually make a couple dollars. So um, we'll, we'll see if it's wait till halfway in the season to make a decision. But it may come down to what 
uh, they actually ended up signing for, which was okay money for half a season for both of those veteran guys. Yeah, and they can both, you know, sit at home. You don't have to go through the grind of training camp. And, you know, it's a 17-game schedule now. And that, you know, 34, 35-year-old players are going to wear down over a 17-game schedule. If, if you do it the right way and you stay in shape, and it was pretty clear that Limbaugh and, and Dominic and Sue stayed in shape, and you can come in and pick and choose and, and pick a contender and go ring shopping. A lot of times it happens in other sports. It hasn't happened much in the NFL. We might be seeing a new phase, uh, a new market for the NFL with these veteran players. And uh, I I was thinking of your buddy, the ex-Eagle defensive coordinator, when I found out not only were they going to play, but end up playing a lot. Uh, the phrase that you like to uh, quote from Coach Schwartz, uh, startup costs. I guess startup costs are only for rookies because there were no startup costs for Linval <laughs> yeah. Johnson for Dominic too. Talk about plug and play. They put him in there. Yeah, and they well, that's like the right part term. of the system for years. In Jim's defense, when he talks about startup costs, he is talking about young players. Uh, right. But the plug and play, the, the phrase, now that's been used for years by coaches and GMs. And that is, you know, that's going by the wayside. Um, not only here, but it's happened. You saw Christian McCaffrey in San Francisco, TJ Hawkinson in Minnesota. You know, these guys are just getting plugged and played and playing successfully. Um, yeah, a lot of those old school sentiments and mentalities are being proven incorrect. And you think about it, you know, Linball's a nose tackle, right? What's he got to know, man? Yeah, it, it's his job to take up two blockers and create penetration and, 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 and disrupt running plays, you know? So they put him out there and he did it. And, he, you know, in his prime, he was one of the best nose tackles in the NFL. And, you know, he's 34. We have to see if he can hold up. He said before the game, he said, it's not week one. It's not the first week because he's healthy. He's got to see how he's feeling after the first game. And we'll see how that shakes out because, you know, that's the problem. The bangs, the bruises, and he plays a very physical position. But, man, he's strong. I, I, I told you that on the show, Jody. I talked to Jason Kelsey about Linball Joseph a lot because he used to play him twice a year with the Giants. You know, you had the NFC Championship game. He was on Minnesota at that time. Kelsey's always said – He's the strongest player he's ever faced, um, and he he showed it from day one. He just throws people around. It's pretty impressive. And we'll see if he feels like Fletcher Cox did last week when Fletcher was asked to play as many yeah. snaps as he was. Now, he Florida. might be – yeah, he might feel shitty this week. Yeah, so. he might just do it. We'll have to uh, find that out for him. Now, he, I he do have one club, question. By the way. One question on the defense because um, – and I, I get it from an Eagles standpoint – you want to try and move as quickly and or gloss over the first drive as much as you can. They went through the Eagles like they were Swiss cheese. They yeah. went right down the field, seven yards per clip for Jonathan Taylor. And I'm sitting there watching the game. Going, oh, damn. Maybe the blueprint to beat the Eagles is actually out there. I thought it was overstated the week before with what the commanders did. But damn, if the Colts didn't do just that to them, and then the defense was able to turn it on a dime and basically shut them down and their running game from that point on. And and Sue and Joseph were out there. They might not have started the game, but they were out there as part of that drive. Yet the exact opposite results from there on in. Uh, anything specific, anything that went different. They, were just, they needed a couple snaps under their belt to get into the game. Because I was worried after that first drive, Johnny Mac. I got to be honest. Yeah, I wasn't because I think JG made a mistake. If you go to the first, you know, I was surprised, um, to be honest, that uh, Linball was starting. Uh, the first play of the game was a, a, a run up the middle for three yards, and he was in on the tackle uh, with TJ Edwards. And then the second down, second and seven, he was in, and they had a one-yard run. Uh, uh, actually, it was a short pass, sorry, to Michael Pittman. 
but Linval was on the game. So you set up the third and six, and then I give JG praise here. He dials up what all the Eagles fans want, the blitz, and TJ Edwards is loose, and he's bearing down on Matt Ryan, and Josiah Scott can't hold up on the back end. Michael Pittman just smoked him. 24-yard gain, and here's where the mistake comes in. Then he went to the four-man front. Didn't go back to Linball. Now, maybe that was pitch count. You know, he's just starting. And all of a sudden, against the four-man front, Taylor up the middle for 28 yards, Taylor for nine yards. So I think he made that mistake, and he made the correction. And and I was talking to Linball after the game, and he said he was a little bit surprised how much he played. Um, but – and he said, look, when it's run downs, I'm going to play. When it's pass downs, I'm not going to play. <laughs> Very honest. Um, and, and JG made the quick, quick correction. And, you know, one, we, I just talked about the Dallas Goddard injury. We talked a lot about the Jordan Davis injury. That Avante Maddox injury we don't talk enough about because it, Josiah Scott, man, he's having a real difficult time. And, and later in the game, he got beat twice. He got beat on the long – when they took the 16-10 lead, long pass, that was Josiah Scott. And then the first down on the last drive, which the Eagles obviously managed to uh, clean it up, was a big uh, mistake by Josiah Scott. So the defense, other than the first drive, they made the correction. Uh, was really good, but – they need Avante Maddox back, and they need Avante Maddox back. All right, quickly. so we go there next. Um, guys that are on IR. Uh, we've now continued to add to that list, unfortunately, uh, with the injuries that they've suffered. Uh, any time – I know that uh, Sirianni wasn't going to give it, uh, but anything you could have read off last week or uh, guys who may, may have commented on their own status, any time frames on injured Eagles and – when is realistically uh, their return going to be? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I asked somebody about Jordan Davis because my first thought when they bring in not only Joseph but also Sue, um, you know, in one week you start to think the obvious. Well, maybe Jordan Davis uh, won't be back at, after his four-game stint on IR. Um, and I would – I was told pretty insistently I wouldn't read too much into that. They expect him back uh, pretty quickly, if not, you know, that fourth game uh, pretty quickly after that. Um, and and Dallas is a little bit murkier uh, because I've heard everything from could be season ending to, um, you know, could be four weeks. I think the best – they expect him back in the regular season. Um whether that's the final game or two, but boy, they need him back. They just need to persevere until they get him back. And Abonte, you know, it's a high ankle sprain, uh, you know, four to six weeks, I think would be uh, the real, no surgery or anything like that. So um, if they can persevere through this little hump and they get those three guys back, this team's really impressive from a, a talent perspective. All right. I want to ask you about a specific play yesterday, and we're not being negative. We're just trying to cover all the angles here. On Birds 365, it was not one of the better plays for the Eagles. The A.J. Brown fumble yesterday. You were at the stadium. I asked Barrett about it yesterday. We had Dom on ask him about it, but all three of us were watching the game on TV from home. You were there. He just seemed tentative. After he made the catch – he's not the kind of guy who's going to juke and jive and sidestep a defender. He's going to go either with speed or with power after he makes a catch for whatever rack he can get his hands on. And he didn't on that play and the ball got slapped out from the side and ended up being almost a very costly turnover. Uh, what would your read on that play? Did anybody ask AJ Brown about it after the game? Did you um, yeah, I, I, I just think it was a perfect punch. I think if you look at that play, there's certain times, um, and I forget who did it. I got to look it up, but I give the defender credit there. I mean, he just punched really? that thing, and it was like you know, it's like a Mike Tyson knockout blow. He hit it perfectly, and that ball was coming out. 
sometimes, you know, you see with helmets, guys, not as much today because you can't lower your helmet. But, you know, when the helmet hits the football, it doesn't matter what you're doing. It's coming out. Um, and now you see the Eagles do it all the time with the punching, maybe too much. Uh, trying, but, you know, with Marcus Epps, that was a big turnover. Uh, Jonathan Taylor was just grinding and grinding and grinding. And then all of a sudden the football's out. Um, the NFL's got to do something about that rule, by the way. Sometimes they blow the whistle. Sometimes they don't blow the whistle. The Eagles um, got a break gotta, on that play. Yeah, they got to they got to do something with that rule. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it just got punched out, and it was a perfect punch, and, and I don't think it's something to be worried about. But I will say when Nick Sirianni um, – you know, talked about there's no luck and Jonathan Gannon. Yeah, oh, there's luck. That was a perfect punch. Guys punching at the football. You know, we all know A.J. Brown, um, swole Batman. I mean, he's as powerful as it comes, a wide receiver. Um, but if somebody punches on the, on the, on, you know, on the, on the button, it's coming out. And I think that's what happened. Yeah, I, I put more emphasis on the swell Batman himself. I, I think he was caught in between making a move, and I don't think he – you're giving 90% of the credit to the defender. I'll say that uh, that was a play that could have been averted. Uh, I think that uh, – yeah, was Zai, I, I was trying to – it was Zaire Franklin. Yeah, if you look back at the play, he just – he just perfect, perfect. And Franklin – oh, by the way, but this, in addition to that play – Despite the pass interference against Miles Sanders, he played a hell of a game yesterday. Philly he did, came but in that and... pass interference, boy, he panicked. He really panicked on that. That was that was a bad job. But it, overall, he played a good game. That's he... the thing about defense, man. You make one big play. Corners talk about it all the time. Ta uh, offensive tackle, too, from the offensive perspective. You play a great game, great game, great game, and all of a sudden, there's one high profile moment where you look bad. And that's kind of what happened to Sire Franklin. You're right. He played really well. He played very um, well. Yeah. But he, he was, panicked. He panicked and there was no need for him to panic on that play. He did. Uh, he he goes, explained it afterwards. He said he thought Miles was going to the end zone. And he just wanted to stop a touchdown. The ball yeah. was, if anything, the ball was underthrown, which ended up helping the Eagles to get the penalty. But if it wasn't underthrown, yeah. maybe Miles would have gotten all the way to the end zone. So yeah. uh, free, free 39 yards. Those are the hidden yardage. And Nick Sirianni talks about it all the time with uh, explosive plays. That counts. That's third. That was the most explosive play of the day uh, for the Eagles uh, offensively. Right. They got 39 yards out of that. Uh, and you're right. You know who also played well for Indianapolis? Rodney McLeod. Rodney played. made a couple really of plays. Well. Yes. He did. Really well. He did. Uh, and I do want to talk, we'll bring this up with our, our first guest in a second, about those hidden yards. Some people critiquing the Eagles' overall offense until Jalen Hurts took him on his back in those last two possessions that the Eagle offensive play calling was unimaginative or not putting enough confidence into Jalen Hurts. They're behind the sticks all day because of silly penalties. They took too many. So they, there's a hidden aspect of the game. The Eagles took too many offensive penalties, which put them in less than stellar uh, play calling positions. I'm not going to leave that as much on Shane Steichen's plate as some people seem to be doing, as I am shame on the players who were taking those offensive penalties. All right, that's just one of many things we're going to talk about with our next guest. You know him, you love him. He's here with us all the time. He's John's uh, running mate at Sports Illustrated. Eagles Maven Ed Kratz is going to join us next here on Birds 365. Don't wait until after Thanksgiving.